Now, for those of you who do not want to see the styling, feel free to pause this, get the CSS from the GitHub repository and come back. And for those of you who want to see the full styling, then I'm going to do this now. Let's save this and let's go back to the style.css and we can start. All right, the first thing that we need to do, let's go to Google Fonts and select the fonts that you want. So in this case, I'm using Poppins. Let's search for Poppins. Here it is. And from here, you can select which weight you want. For example, I've got the light, I've got the extra light, the light, the regular, the semi boat, and the boat selected. Now, what I'm going to do for this project, I'm going to be importing it. So I'm going to use the import from here and grab this. It's probably best to download the font and include it in your project instead of including it through the link or the import. So you can avoid some privacy issues with the GDPR stuff. But for ease of use, I'm going to use the import from here. So I'm going to copy it, go back to styles.css and paste it. As you can see, this has pop-ins with the weights that I have selected. And now I can start using it by copying the font family from here. And as an example, let's change it on the entire website. So I can do body and you see inside the body, I can paste font family, pop-ins, sans serif, save this. Let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, everything changes. Close this. And now let's focus on the layout. So first of all, I want to set up a couple of variables. In order to do this, we can put them in root and we can give them name. For example, I'm going to set a few colors starting with black. And then this is going to be hash 1C1C1C. So it's not fully black, but it should be comfortable to read. Then I'm going to have a few more. This is going to be gray. And this one is going to be 7E7E7E. We're going to have light gray, which is going to be so gray dash light. And this one is going to be E4, E4, E4. And then we're going to have another one red and this one is going to be b3 one two three four zeros now i also want to put some variables for the font size so i'm going to do font size dash base for the base i'm going to put it as one rem which is normally equals 16 pixels as default on most browsers if not all now and then i'm going to put dash dash font size and for the headings i want to make the font responsive and to do this i'm going to be using the clamp tool so in fact, I'm going to copy and paste a few and explain them super quickly. Feel free to pause the video and copy them if you wish to. But essentially, there are loads of calculators online that you can use. But what you can do is give them the, the lowest number of your heading, for example. Let's say this was the H1 heading. You can give them the lowest number that you want your font size to be and then the highest. And then they can calculate the rest for you. And when you scale down the browser, the font will scale down with the viewport, with the view width, which is great. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate this in a second. And I've basically done this with medium, large and extra large. And I'll demonstrate this in a second. And the last variable that I'm going to add inside here is going to be border radius, dash radius. And I'm going to put this as 10 pixels, just so if we decided to change it throughout the entire website, I can reuse this. For the body, we've already got the font set. Let's change the color of the text to be var and then to be this black color that we have. Then we're going to have the font size to be the variable font size base of one rem. Then we're going to have the background color to be this creamy color, which is going to be hash FAF5EE. As you can see, a nice color. And then I'm also going to add an image. So background image. And this image is going to be located under images. And then slash image dash noise dash 361 is basically a pattern times 370 dot PNG. And I've already pasted this in my images folder. I'm going to open and show you super quickly. So I've already got this hero image that we're going to be using and I've already got the noise image here that we're going to be using as well. Feel free to copy them and paste them into your images folder. And also the body has a margin as default. So I'm going to reset this to zero. So margin zero. If you go back to the website, refresh already looking a little bit better. I'm going to style some of the inputs and the buttons super quickly. I'm going to start with the input of text. 
And inside here, we can put the type equals text. And then I can copy this a couple of times. So one, two, three. This is going to be email. This is going to be password. And this is going to be search. And then we're going to do every select. I don't even know if I'm going to have select, but let's do it anyway. And then text area, I'll definitely have. So for this, let's do some basic styling. For example, I want to change the font family to be exactly the same as poppins here. Otherwise, it's going to be the default one for the, for the inputs. And then I'm going to do the font size to be the variable of the base, 16 pixels. Display, I want to display everything as block. And then box sizing, if I put a little bit of padding, I want everything to stay the same so it doesn't go over its own size box. And then the weight can be 100% to all of them. And let's add a little bit of padding to 0 0.7 rem top and bottom, 0 0.75 rem left and right. Margin bottom for each is going to be one rem. Let's also create a style for buttons, which we can apply whenever we want to. I'm going to call this BDN, short for button. And then I'm going to put the background color to the variable black. And now inside here, I'm going to do border none because some of the buttons do have borders and we don't want that. We want to reset it. The color can be set to white. And then I'm going to do padding of 16 pixels and then 32 pixels text decoration is going to be none margin i'm going to do a little bit of four top and bottom and then two pixels left and right and then i'm going to change the cursor to pointer for all the buttons and let's create a delete button which i'm just going to change to the background color of red pretty much so btn maybe delete and then this is going to be a padding of 10 pixels, 16 pixels, and then background color of the red color that we have. So red like so, and that's it. So to make all of the images on all layout responsive, we can do IMG. And then inside here, we can do width of 100% and the height of auto. That will make all of the images on all layout responsive. Now let's focus on the container. If I refresh, you will see that the image is fully responsive and if I scale it down, it's all working. Now, I actually want my website to be in the middle. So I'm going to use the container that we created earlier to do that. Paste a comment called layout and I'm going to do container. For the container, I'm going to set a max width of 9A2. And I'm going to set the margin to be zero top and bottom and left and right to be auto which is going to push the whole layout in the middle of the page and i'm going to add a little bit of padding on left and right so top and bottom can be zero left and right can be 10 so when we shrink the website to mobile the, i don't want the content to be touching the sides so if we go back refresh you will see that we are now containerized and if i scroll sorry if i put it on mobile you will see that we're getting the 10 pixels here which is great Perfect. Now I'm also going to put a little bit of margin on the main, which is if we go to the layout main here, I'm going to put a little bit of padding on this. So let's do that. And then that's going to be padding of 20 pixels and then zero. For the hero image, let's do some changes on that as well. I'm going to do dot hero image. That's the class that we've gave it. And then I'm going to do a max height just in case I don't want the height to be over the one that I set. So five to eight pixels and then filter. I'm going to do drop shadow. And then this is going to be zero pixels, 44 pixels, 34 pixels, RGBA. And then inside here, we're going to do 0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
except the border radius isn't. So I can look into that. Oh yeah, I've put border instead of border radius. Okay, that should fix it. Now let's have a look at our main header. If we go back to the header here, as you can see, the header consists of three parts. We have the wrapper of header, we have our logo, we have the navigation, and we have the button. On mobile, I want the logo and the button to be on one row, and then this to go on the second row. But on desktop, I want all of them to be on one row, and I want this to be on the left, middle, right. To do this, we can use those classes and use grid. Inside here, let's start by doing header. And for the header, we can display everything as grid. Note that we're working from mobile first and going up. So display grid. And then this is going to be align items to center, just because sometimes some items are bigger than others. I'm going to say grid template columns to be one fraction, one fraction, which creates two columns for mobile. And for the rows, we can do grid template rows, and this can be auto, so auto creating them. And then I'm going to add a little bit of padding to the top of 10 pixels. And now we can do grid template areas, and I'm going to use this in order to align the items where I want. This is actually pretty cool. So what we can do, we can create two rows like so, and we can tell which item goes where. So for example, I can say, I want the logo to be here on the top left, and I want the button to be on the top right. And then I want the menu to be taking the full width of the second row, like so. Now you might be wondering, well, how does this work? Well, we need to tell each element from here. So the header nav and the button, we need to give them names and the logo, sorry. We need to give them grid names. Let's select the logo first of all. So we can do header underscore underscore logo. And to give it a name, all you do is grid dash area, and then you put the name, which for this is going to be logo. We can do exactly the same for the rest, but let me style the logo first of all. So I'm going to put font weight to be 800. Font size, I'm going to put this as 25 as the foot. I don't want it to shrink. And then for the text decoration, because this is going to be a link, I don't want it to be underlined. So I'm going to remove that. And we're pretty much done. Except when we do hover over this, so I'm going to put hover. I do want the text decoration to be underlined. Now for the nav, we can do similar. Header underscore underscore nav. And then we can do justify content center. But first of all, we need to display this as flex. And then we can give it a grid area of menu because we call the menu here. Let me put this at the top. So we have a little bit of consistency and then we can do exactly the same thing for the button. Header underscore underscore button. We need to display as flex and then justify content to the end potentially. And then we can do grid area to be button. Okay, I'm going to put this at the top. And now this should hopefully work. If I was to go back to the website, it's not going to look great. But as you can see, we have the logo, we have the menu and we have the search bar. Now let me super quickly zoom in. If I click on the grid, you'll see that we're getting two columns, two rows. So now for desktop, we can do a media query and position this in the middle of those two. To do this, we can go back. And under the header here, we can do a media query at media and then only screen. And then we put minimum width of seven, six, eight pixels. Inside here, we put header and we can do grid template columns, auto one fraction. Auto. The left side can be auto, so it takes whatever size there is of the element. The middle one can take one fraction of the available space, and the right one can be auto as well. But now we need to do the same thing as here. We need to reorder the elements. So we can do grid, template, areas. And then inside here, we can create all areas. So I'm going to put logo to start with. Then we're going to do menu. And then we're going to do button. Now look what happens. 
on desktop we're getting the logo the menu and the button they don't look great just yet but when we scroll down sorry when we go down to mobile you will see that they break on two lines and now when we style the button and the menu they'll look much better let's do that all right let's start with the button so here we have the header button and inside this we actually have a button like so and i'm gonna use that instead i'm gonna display this as flex because we have an icon inside put a little bit of a gap of 0.3 rem align the items to be center border to be zero and let's give it a little bit of padding of six pixels and then 12 pixels background i'm gonna set to none then i'm gonna put the border radius and i'm gonna use the variable of border radius which is 10 pixels then i'm gonna do border of two pixel solid transparent and then the font size can be the base font size so variable font size base font weight we can set to 600 and then color we can set to variable of black perfect if we go back that's looking much better now and also we can do a hover for this so what i'm going to do is copy this and then for the hover i'm just going to change the border so i'm going to do this but instead of transparent maybe we can do variable of the black one that's it so for the header navigation now which is the only thing left i'm gonna do so header underscore underscore nav ul i'm gonna remove the unordered list style type so remove the dots basically list style type of none i'm gonna display everything in one line so flex and then gap between them can be one rem then the font weight can be set to 600 and i'm going to remove any padding there is of them because i want to add the padding on each link instead so they're easier to click so header underscore underscore nav and then now ul a for the links and inside here we can give each link 10 pixels of padding so they're easier to press and i'm going to remove the text decoration because they're all link i don't want all of them to be underlined i'm going to put that as none and now I'm going to put the hover to be text decoration underlined. Remove the padding from here. We don't need it as it's already set. And I'm going to create an active class. So I'm going to copy this. So when we are on the home page or the about page, we want to know. And I'm going to do .active. And then inside here, we can do color and change the color to variable, maybe the gray color. That's it. Let's go back and refresh. I also want to change all the H1, H2, and H3 tags, and I also want to change the links. I'm going to do this a little bit above here. So maybe underneath the body, I'm going to create a link. And for the link, I'm going to keep it super simple. I'm just going to do color, variable, and I'm going to set this to the black color. You can do the visited, hovers, and so on if you wish to. And for the H1, I'm going to do something similar i'm just going to change the font size so font size is going to be the variable and this one is going to be the largest one so font size large and now we can copy this two more times and i'm going to do h2 and h3 and this is going to be large and then this is going to be medium okay if we go back now we should see the changes this is much larger and if I scale the browser, you'll see that this is fully responsive. So it goes smaller on small screens. And now this is also working. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's style this section now. This is going to be the author section. Scroll to the bottom. And inside here, let's do author. I'm going to give it a little bit of padding. So 10 pixels, zero. And then text align can be center. And for the heading, this is going to be author heading. I call that dot order underscore underscore heading and then i'm going to do margin top of 10 and then margin bottom of five for the body text it's going to be very similar so order body and then the font size i'm going to change to the variable and then this is going to be font size medium and then i'm going to give it a little bit of margin five pixels 
zero, 40 pixels, zero. And now let's focus on the articles. So we've got that working. And now let's focus on the articles here. What we can do, let's start with the article heading. And then inside here, we can do margin top of four rem. And then font weight can be set to 400. Then I'm going to focus on the unordered list, which is article UL. And for this, we're going to remove the list, the dots. So list style type to none. Remove any default paddings and margins to zero. Then I'm going to set the font size to be clamp. And I'm going to put this to be 1.13 rem. I should have added this as variable calc and then this is going to be 1.08 rem and then plus 0.22 vw viewport view width and then comma 1.25 rem maximum we also want to display this as flex and we want to do flex direction column let's focus on the date so article list date for the date i'm going to do font size to be the base color is going to be the gray color width is going to be 100 pixels and display inline block in fact, I think I'm going to change this to be a little bit larger to 260 pixels instead. Let's go back. It's looking okay. Now we need to focus on the actual link and push the date to the right side and make it fully responsive. So what I'm going to do is inside here, we're going to do article UL. List and then target the link inside it. So I'm going to display the link as flex and then flex direction can be column or mobile justify content space between so they push each other to left and right and text decoration since this is a link can be none and then margin can be set to 18 pixels and then zero that should be good enough let's have a look okay they're pushing this is going to be the mobile so now on desktop we want to do a media query and i'm going to copy the one from above here it is so copy this media query and let's just change this a little bit. I'm going to change the article ULA. So the link flex direction, I'm going to change it to row and then align items to center. And then for the date, I'm going to do article list date. I'm going to change this to text align right. Let's have a look. And that's looking good. I don't know why the text is so small. Maybe I didn't change it. Or maybe I made a mistake here. So let me have a look. Yep, I've made a mistake here with the calc. So calc, save it, and let's have a look. All right, that's a little bit better. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, the text is a little bit better. And we have the date here. Cool. For a list of articles, I want to do a little effect. So when we hover over, they look good and they uh, blur a little bit. And I also want to have a little bit of separation between so article URL lay list and then inside here we can do font size 24 pixels cursor pointer and then we can do transition to be filter 0.0s which is going to be the speed and now we can do article ul list not and then not last child inside here i want to add bottom to everything except the last child so border bottom one pixel solid a variable and then gray dash light then we're going to do a hover effect so article ul and then list hover and i'm going to do filter set to none but if you hover over the actual url i'm going to do article url 
and then hover. I'm going to put list, filter, and then blah, of three pixels like so. But on the list, we need to reset this. So I'm going to do on the list, we can do hover under filter. I'm going to set to none. Okay. And the last thing that I want to do on the articles is set the white space to pre-wrap just because the when you do space or enter, it might not show up on the articles. That's pretty much it. Now let's start the footer super quickly. Footer, and then we're going to do footer and then margin of of for rem and then text align center. Let's save this. Okay, everything is looking good. We also need to set up the pagination here. So I'm going to start this as well. This can go under here. So pagination, we can do it as font size 1.3 rem. Color can be variable gray. And then text decoration can be set to none. We also want margin top to be 40. Then display inline block. We also want to set a hover for the pagination. So I'm going to do hover and then we're going to do color variable black. Let me have a look. Yep, that's looking much better. Uh, we need some more lists to see the effect. We go back and if I create one more list, hopefully we'll see the effect now. Here we go. It's blurred out. This one is blurred out. When we have more, they'll look a little bit better, I think. 